อันหนึ่งมีสิผมอันที่ไอเอ็มดีเพื่อคาดว่าดีแอนด์ดีอินเวอร์สตูอัลบานีสเตทอินเวอร์สตูนิวยอร์กไม่รู้ว่าจะไปสมัครว่าไอเฮอไปถึงจุดนี้ได้ไหมสองปีที่แล้ววันนี้ดังนั้นมันเป็นความน่าสนใจที่ผมเห็นนี่คือหน้าตาที่สดใสแล้วเกิดขึ้นในสำนักงานคณะกรรมการตอนนี้คุณสามารถรู้จักฉันและบอกฉันสวัสดีถ้าคุณเห็นฉันที่ ALA ก่อนที่จะให้คุณรู้จักสถานที่ที่ส่งผลให้เกิดการแชร์เมลบ็อกซ์เราเป็นสำนักงานคณะกรรมการตอนนี้ของสองคณะกรรมการอีกคนหนึ่งของฉัน and uh, for professionals. The department has been um, reduced by more than half during the past 15 years, as the, the case in many state universities. One of my goals uh, upon my arrival was to increase the flexibility of staff assignments and thus our ability to provide timely access to materials. In addition, our library systems department has remained small over the um, over the course of the last 10 years, despite an explosive um, growth in technology. There's also a dramatic increase in the amount of electronic resources being acquired um, from the odd duck. That we suspected might go the way of the Betamax to the essential resources we access by the thousands now. Prior to my arrival in 2012, we had concentrated on acquiring only ebook packages, and had a workflow that met most of our needs. Our monographs cataloger would check the package website periodically and catalog any newly available materials. They would be added to our invisible backlog and worked through as time allowed. We did sometimes fall behind, and in those instances, would assign a professional to handle the copy or train an intern from our library school. As our subject librarians started to see firm order ebooks. On Gobi, the YBP platform, interest grew in firm ordering ebooks. In the past, we have been a heavily paper-based shop, but there was also an interest in getting away from a paper-based workflow. Another complication that we were facing is that we had no budget at all for a turnkey system to automate our workflow. Prior workflow for an ebook would follow the same path as a print book. The subject librarian would print out the website page for the ebook, or email it to the acquisitions department. If it was emailed, acquisitions would print it out for their workflow. When acquisitions would receive the email from the vendor notifying us that we have access to the firm order ebook. Nancy, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but could you speak a little louder? The audience is having trouble hearing you. Oh, yes, I apologize for that. When acquisitions would receive the email from the vendor notifying us that we have access to the firm order ebook. They would forward the email to our monographs cataloger. The monographs cataloger would either catalog the ebook or delegate it to a professional by putting the printed email in a relevant e inbox or by forwarding the email to the individual's email account. 
yes, this caused problems. Which allows me to slip in one of my favorite parts of The Princess Bride. The difficulties with paper traveling from department to department are legion beyond the irony of tracking an ebook with paper. Even if it travels electronically, we can all imagine how an email to an individual email account can get lost in the fray. Some of the challenges of having work go to an individual's mailbox is that even in the most efficient, organized hands, keeping a separate folder of ebooks awaiting cataloging takes time and effort. Further, if that person is ill or on vacation, or simply overwhelmed by the shelves of physical materials awaiting cataloging. The problem can quickly snowball. Finally, as a manager, I wanted to be able to track our invisible backlog to ensure timely access to our ebooks. It was clear to us that the current process was untenable. I was going to joke here that we did what all libraries do. We formed a committee. But I have to say that the ebook working group was an efficient and effective group. And I'm very proud of the work we did. We did not ask our library systems department to help us with this process. As I mentioned before, they are a small group. At the time, they were without a head and very busy with important initiatives that had a wider impact on the libraries. We also did not investigate off-the-shelf solutions. We had zero budget for such a solution. We did discuss and refine our desired parameters, and we did look at what other libraries were doing. The parameters of our solution were that it had to be fast. We had to move quickly to meet the needs of the subject librarians and the patrons who were aware of available ebooks and wanted them. It also had to be cheap. As I mentioned, we had no budget for a solution and nothing on the horizon. It had to be low tech. None of the working group had coding ability. And we did not want to ask our library systems department for help due to the factors I have already mentioned. Also, it had to be accessible to multiple employees. We had to have a system that did not stall out when someone was ill or on vacation, but that would provide our colleagues and patrons with timely access the vast majority of the time. An added parameter, I apologize, was that we wanted to experiment with paperless solution. I've mentioned that we were heavily paper-based, partly due to our high visibility in the state capital, and therefore under the watchful eyes of the university's purchasing and accounting department. We wanted to see how an electronic trail would work. So, as I mentioned, we looked at what libraries were doing. And we searched high and low through the library literature. And if other libraries are using shared emails, and I know they are, 
they are not writing about it in the literature. Turning to business literature, we found an overwhelming amount of solutions. However, businesses have money and programming. Several businesses wrote about interesting solutions, automating workflows, using Outlook, but adding Visual Basic for applications. It made for interesting reading, but it offered no solutions. Our solution was to use a shared mailbox in Microsoft Office Outlook. It met all of our criteria. It was fast in that even though we did have to ask library systems to set it up for us, it took them only a few minutes to do so. Also, it was better than cheap. It was free. And that's really hard to beat and makes administrators very happy. It was easily accessible to multiple staff in different departments across the libraries. It was on everyone's desktop. It came with the job. And it was a matter of giving library systems a list of names, and they added them to the shared mailbox. Also, it lent itself uh, to a pilot project that would be paperless from start to finish. The pilot project began with the following workflow. Our subjects librarians would put in an order through Gobi. As I mentioned, that's the acquisitions platform of YBP to place the order. Acquisitions staff confirm the order and place it with the vendor. The vendor replies with an email to acquisitions that the book is available. They forward that email to the shared Outlook inbox, which is accessible to several staff members in the acquisitions, cataloging services, and circulation departments. Any cataloger with access to the shared mailbox can open the email and catalog the book. In the cases where the patron has asked to be notified when the book is available or for the book to be rush cataloged, they are sent an email to tell them that the ebook is available. In situations where um, the ebook has been ordered for course reserves. The email is flagged for circulation to process it for our e reserves collection. At this point, I'm going to sidestep into some of the cataloging challenges of ebooks. I promise it is germane in showing several issues that can be addressed by the shared mailbox. In discussing the workflow with my professional who does over 90% of the firm order ebook cataloging, we found that the biggest problem is incomplete records. Most of them are hybrid records, which we do accept as copy. We have not yet fully integrated RDA into our copy cataloging procedures as we have more pressing issues to address before turning to that. 
Now, hybrid records do tend to have the 33X fields, for example, instead of the 245 subfield H. A larger issue with the copy we find for eBooks is that it is clear that records are created without looking at the eBook. While it is common and efficient practice to derive ebook records from the print, there are omissions that are disturbing. Illustrations are not noted. Pagination is somewhat, sometimes incomplete. And even basic descriptions, such as author statements, are incorrect. Our practice here is to open the ebook and scroll through the entire text. We feel it is important to do this admittedly time-consuming step because of several reasons. First off, we should check that the link works and does not go to the general website page or, even worse, to an access error page we need to check that we truly have access. It is not common, but it does happen, that the vendor has not thrown the correct switch to activate the ebook. And quite honestly, we feel that it is necessary to open the ebook to catalog it. We approach it the same way we would any print. I've alluded to link difficulties. Some ebook publishers have the bad habit of changing links as serendipitously as some serial publishers change titles. We do not want our patients, patrons, I apologize, to be the first to encounter these difficulties. There are also platform difficulties which do impact the cataloging. Some ebook platforms are clunky to use and frustrating for the cataloger who is trying to be efficient. There is also one platform, which shall remain nameless, who stops the cataloger who is scrolling too quickly through the pages. The cataloger must then go through several steps to verify that they are not a robot. To bring the focus back to the shared mailbox, the cataloging process highlights several advantages of, of it. Because of possible problems with links and vendor missteps, there needs to be the ability to redirect these problems to the appropriate colleagues. The shared mailbox, with its flexibility of, short, of folders, offers a solution to this triage problem. Also, the ebook cataloging process is not as neat and linear as it might be with a physical book that can be placed on a revisor's desk or given to an original cataloger if needed. The shared mailbox and its folders can be manipulated to make the workflow as clear and manageable as that of physical texts. I've included a screenshot of the original shared inbox when we started the pilot program. We have here the inbox. One of the folders is done. We also have one for a virtual book plate, which is for books that have been bought by a particular fund or donor, notify, and we also got a few replacement uh, e-books for things that have gone missing, and uh, those were put in that folder. Um, we did run into several issues with this original setup. 
and we actually made the process much better as we worked through these difficulties. Um, one of my favorite expressions, which my catalogers really hear far too often for their liking, is that the perfect is the enemy of the good. The mailbox, as it was set up, worked well as a pilot, although it was far from perfect. The most egregious problem that we encountered during our pilot was that our ebook packages had been routinely sent to library systems for proxy when they were first acquired. We discovered that we had not included this important step in the firm order workflow, which slightly undermines the whole point of an ebook. Also, while the initial workflow had clearly delineated tasks, we found several that fell between cracks among departments. For example, we initially thought that circulation would be notifying patrons for rush and notify ebooks using an automated notification process. When that process was delayed indefinitely, we weren't sure whose responsibility it should be. After talking with my cataloger, we decided that it made sense for the cataloger to email the patrons when the book was done, letting them know that the material was available. However, we didn't have anyone assigned to check replies that may come back to the shared inbox. We didn't even think about replies. For the most part, these replies are thanking us for the notification, but they should be monitored in case a patron has a problem. The shared inbox is the likeliest way they would let us know about any problem. There are a few minor problems that we needed to address as well. Especially when the pilot was new, curiosity would overtake the staff, some of the staff, who would then open emails in the inbox, but not return them to unread status. And unfortunately, the way we had it set up, unread status was the only way a cataloger could tell that the ebook had not been cataloged. Red emails could mean someone was working on them, or they were done, or there was some link or access problem where they needed to be referred to other colleagues. And also, we found pretty quickly that um, things that were rush, especially with this confusion in Open, opened emails. It was really important to mark the subject line with rush and to use the high importance priority marker that is available in Outlook. So we have decided on some future enhancements. And I can show you what some of them are. Over here, we have been using uh, color category. We first, the proxy oversight that we needed to address was easily corrected by including staff from library systems in the shared inbox and creating that step in the workflow so that even our firm order ebooks are now um, sent through the proxy um, workflow. We also need to define responsibilities for monitoring the replies to check for problems needing further work. The problem with unre unread messages not being returned to unread status uh, 
can be addressed by follow-up training, although the curiosity has somewhat diminished, and so we don't run into it quite as often. But the color categories, which I mentioned, are uh, a very good solution set to override the fact of things being unread or read. The um, color categories I've set up are pending, rush, notify, done, proxy, and problems. The screenshot I have only shows uh, the problem, this yellow up here, and the pending. Uh, we have a ton of pending uh, due to a massive influx of firm ordered ebooks that week. Uh, we usually only get a handful and we can keep up with them quite well. Uh, the color categories offer several workflow solutions. They could be used in a triage fashion by someone monitoring the email to indicate which catalogers have been assigned certain ebooks or to indicate problems that have been marked for the attention of library systems, acquisitions, or cataloging, because actually problems can go any of those areas for further investigation. I mentioned earlier, earlier that I knew other libraries used shared mailboxes, even though no one has written about it. When I was at the University of Florida, we had a shared mailbox and cataloging where patrons and colleagues could send catalog problems they found. It was a very popular service for our patrons, as well as at the service desk. In fact, we received enough email that we rotated amongst ourselves curation of this mailbox month by month. When you were the curator, you could correct the problem yourself. You could triage them to other colleagues if they were authority control or other database maintenance issues, for example, or delegate them if you were lucky enough to have staff reporting to you. I've only mentioned cataloging uses, but there are many workflows that would benefit from the use of a shared mailbox. And at this point, I will turn things over to Felicity, who will talk about some of the ways that she's used mailbox. Hello, everyone. I am Felicity Dykus at the University of Missouri-Columbia. I'm also on the Continuing Education Committee. So for a long time, I've known that I had a workflow problem, actually probably multiple workflow problems. So when I saw the webinar proposal that Nancy put in about using an email box to help a light bulb went, in on my head, went on in my head, and I thought, this could work for my department. So I'm just going to describe my experiences in implementing this. So I'm head of the Digital Services Department, University of Missouri. Just a little background. We don't have an ERM. We do use serial solutions. So we get MARC records for packages from there. We also use it for URL resolver and A to Z list. So the big picture of our workflow has worked. It's just the little details that have been getting lost. So in digital services, uh, we have three main things we take care of. All the online resource cataloging. So that'd be subscriptions, uh, firm orders freely available. So these are the kind of requests we get for that. Request a catalog and broken link reports. We also take care of all the digitization and the digital library institution repository, and then I get miscellaneous requests for things like to change a Google display, which if you've ever tried to do that, it's, it's, you can't do it, but 
just to let you know the variety of, of kinds of requests we get. So background to the problem, we're getting requests from many people. The requests vary widely. It's hard to keep track of the status of responses. And plus, um, I get a lot of the emails, but I may not be the person doing, doing the work. So it wasn't the most direct way to pass information on. And I always like to keep track of information for future referral. So I wanted a shared place to store information. So for our cataloging, it's a little different than Nancy's um, because I am talking about packages and we do get record loads also. But our requests come from selectors as well as acquisition staff. And our source of records, again, we get, um, we do individual cataloging using WorldCat. We also get records from Serial Solutions and we still load some records from vendors separately from Serial Solutions. So workflow prior to this, I personally received many email requests and I printed out or forwarded the emails to individuals. Then it was hard to figure out what was happening with them. But then one of the main problems was sometimes it was just easier for me to do all the work myself. So it was a broken link, I would go take care of it. And that was happening too often and things weren't getting done expediently. So luckily, we already had three email boxes set up. So I have my personal one, um, had one set up for digitization, one for institution repository, and then there's that one that's a default. So a little background here is that digital services is a department that was formed just a year and a half ago. So some of these boxes I inherited. So luckily, they were in place and ready to use. The most base one works fine now, primarily for institutional repository requests. So the digitization one, though, was ready to be used. And that's the one um, I decided to use for our online resources. So Outlook is what we have. And here's an op there's an option to categorize information. So I'm going to show you some screenshots of how we did this. So we use the categories. So by default, there's a limited number. And the last one there, yellow category, is, is how they're named, blue, green. But you can look on the right side there. You have the option to rename those and add new ones. And so actually, there's a total of 25 different colors to choose from. It can get pretty complex. But you're not limited to the number of mailboxes. That because you can assign the same color to different mailboxes. So here's the final list of categories we used. And again, we're using this mailbox for two different purposes. One of them was for cataloging, and one of them is for our digitization. So for cataloging, um, we named them also to designate the workflow. So request a catalog or a problem report. So that's 1A and 1B. And we added the numbers there just so when we're sorting, they kind of sort in order. So a second step would be to catalog or add it to 360 or to solve a problem, usually in Merlin, which is our online catalog. Fourth step might be review. So sometimes when people do original cataloging, well, we have new staff, so I'm reviewing that, and then completed. And it's also nice to highlight compliments, so we added that category. On digitization, um, it's the same sort of workflow or steps. Request to digitize miscellaneous, in process, digital library problem, wrap up, which might be notifying someone that something's been digitized and completed. So this has worked out really well for us. You know, just in tracking, and also keeping track of where things are. So here is what the shared inbox looks like. And what's really great is that you can assign more than one category to any specific um, email. So we generally assign one for the type of uh, action or status 
and then one email for who is working on it. So going back to this screen, you can see the top three action, Felicity, that's me, um, our student assistant, and another person. So there's three of us who, who will be doing the work. So here you can see we do the action for the person and then what uh, the status is. In Outlook, there's also the option to filter. So it's really easy for me to go in, filter it, and pull up the things that need my attention. So that was a problem in my inbox when I had a lot more emails tracking down the things that needed my immediate attention. But here in this one, I can go through the emails and quickly figure out what I need to do. The sort function is also really useful. So you can see here that if there's more than one category, the email shows up under both of those. And I want to let you know here, too, because we've been able to keep up on the emails in our inbox. I did have people send me emails just for this presentation so you could see the type. So I don't want you to think we have lots of broken links all the time. Um, and when we do, we're able to quickly keep up on them. So you can see that in the right column, the categories clearly show up, but then they're also highlighted here. So as the supervisor of the unit, I can quickly sort and see what everyone has assigned to them. So that's been really helpful. And just a quote from our graduate student, that she likes the ability to search the entire mailbox for categories that pertain to her projects. So she doesn't have to need to scroll through everyone's. So the sorting and filtering have been really useful. Here's one downside. Um, Full-time staff use the, not sure what it's called, the client version of Outlook, but our graduate student uses the webmail version. It's not loaded on her machine and she doesn't have access to that version. So you can see in the webmail, it's, it's not as clear. So she has to hover over that category to see what it means. So for her, we keep a printed list of the colors so she can quickly look at the colors and see, you know, eyeball it. Otherwise, she has to scroll through it. So in the webmail version, though, she still has the option to filter and sort, and she can add and delete categories to any email. So we don't keep things in our inbox forever with a category. We also use folders. Nancy showed the ones she uses. So we probably need to develop these a bit more. You can see attention felicity. That's the old system that didn't work very well, where someone would just put the email in that folder and I was supposed to look at it. So this new system of categorizing where it's all in the inbox and classified has been working much better. So the benefits are that it's been easier to delegate and assign work to people. So when I get something in for a broken link, those generally go to our graduate student. Um, other problems may go to the other full-time person. Sometimes I take care of them. It's easier to ensure that someone's acting on the requests. Without the categories, it wouldn't be really clear with the, the emails in the inbox if anyone was taking care of it. So this, it's easy to see who is supposed to be taking care of it and what step it's on. So that status. Plus, emails are not lost. So future work and possibilities that we may look at. I still need to work on marketing this email box. So I've mentioned it to people as this is the preferred email address, but I need to do more work in making sure people use that. And so I've started to send emails from our digital service or digitization email box so people get that one in their head. So people are still sending them to me, but with our system here, I quickly forward those to the shared mailbox and then can categorize and assign work there. We still haven't, since we're pretty new users, we still haven't um, figured out maybe a schedule for checking the box for Rush Material. 
So I need to work on that. And I know there's other Outlook features, like the follow-up flags, which I have pasted here on the right side. So for a rush item, well, especially for a broken link, you know, I think I'll probably start trying testing out using the flag. That's for today. And then for other things, you know, to prioritize in that way. Also, you know, I want to start thinking, is this a way to assign work in general? Um, you know, even if I don't receive an email, but I know something needs to be done, that I could send an email to that box and assign it as a way. So I want to explore ways that we can use this more to track our work, to assign work, keep track of what's happening. So I was really thrilled to see the proposal and to try it out. I just want to let you know that it has worked. We're new, but it has worked, and um, it's just easy to see what needs to be done. Okay. Um, this is Mary Reader. I'm the one that spoke up before. I guess you guys could not hear my entire introduction at the beginning, so I'm going to run through a little bit of that again. Um, Nancy, as you saw on her screen, has been a cataloging manager since 1990, and she's presented sessions on various cataloging and management topics at the American Library Association's midwinter meetings and annual conferences, the SUNY Librarians Association Conference, and the Association of American Law Libraries annual conference. She's currently the head of cataloging services for the department at the University at Albany State University of New York. Uh, Felicity is the head, as she said, of digital services the department at the University of Missouri Columbia. Um, I guess we can all be heard now. So I, we have one comment from Rita. She says, we set up function-based mailboxes, library circulation, library acquisitions, library serials, library cataloging, library record load in order to deal with these problems and the problem of staff turnover and vendor relations. Um, that kind of made me wonder, how big are your staffs that are, are sharing these mailboxes, Nancy and Felicity? Um, well, we have uh, several um, departments and actually that's uh, the function-based mailboxes are very helpful, but I think that uh, the shared mailbox I was talking about is the first one that uh, goes among departments. Um, our circulation department, we have about four or five staff who monitor that uh, shared mailbox. We have three catalogers who uh, are on the list, and we have, I believe, two or three acquisitions folks. So it's a small group, but uh, again, we're a pretty small shop, so um, we tend to do well at least at keeping up with uh, timely access, I would say. And Felicity? Since the difference here is that all the work is, the only people who have access to this are in the digital services department. So there's five of us and three of us currently using that, that mailbox. Okay. How long do you guys keep your older messages in these folders? Um, well, we keep uh, several months in the done folder just in case we get um, a problem arising from them and we can sort of track where it was in the process, what problems we might have had with it. Um, but I think I'm probably a bit of a pat grant, and I probably don't keep to keep need to keep all of that. But it makes me feel better. <laughs> and I okay. I tend to keep emails forever. <laughs> oh, good! I'm glad to hear that, Felicity. <laughs> but this is where too I want to look at it more because in my personal email, personal email. Oh, my work email. I mean, my individual work email, not personal. Um, you know, I have emails for different packages we get, so Safari, eBrary, and mm. I'm thinking, since other people help with that, whether I should move some of those to this shared email box. Mm -hmm. so I'm interested, is this a place to keep track of all our, our well, our correspondence? 
I think it is, but need to figure out how that'll work. Mm -hmm. Okay. And are these mailboxes set up so that the messages automatically go into each of the um, people that are involved inboxes automatically, or do they have to log into this inbox to see these messages? Oh, for us, um, it's an added email box that shows below our individual work email. So, for example, on mine, my uh, individual mailbox shows up at the top of the frame, and then I just scroll down, and okay. the shared e email uh, is in another inbox at the bottom. That's the same, too, at the University of Missouri, but I'm going to add that to my future slide is whether we can set up rules so that if we add a category, it would automatically be forwarded, you know, just as an alert that there's something there. Mm -hmm. I like That's that, a that idea. a copy would be forwarded. Mm -hmm. That's a good that, idea. That would be nice. Okay. Heather is wondering, can information be exported out of Outlook for analysis? Hmm. Um, I'd have to ask our library systems folks that. Um, I don't know if there would be a way to do that, but I'm not positive there isn't either. Yeah, yeah I'm not familiar sure with a function either. that does that. It would be Heather, great if we could. Heather, were you thinking of exporting into something like Excel, or what were you thinking about exporting into? Hopefully she'll type in more in the questions box. Nancy, I have a, this is Felicity, I have a question. Now, do you, do you ever change the subject lines of your emails, or do they just stay the same? We haven't, except to add Rush. That was one thing that uh, we very early on realized that we had to, to really make those stand out. Um, but that would be another way to alert colleagues, I would think, to things that had to be um, addressed. You know, you could put uh, attention, uh, e-resources, or library systems, or something like that. But you seem to have a standard subject line, in any case, based on your screenshots, right? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. I think that's just because we are forwarding the emails from the vendors, and they tend to just have a um, boilerplate subject line. All right, and Heather says, Excel probably, but potentially into an access database. So that's, that's in an interesting idea. We have to play with like, Outlook a little bit and see if we can do something like that. Mm -hmm. I may ask my IT guy here about that, because that is intriguing. Yeah, I think that would be great. I'm curious for the audience, what email systems do people use? If you could put that in the question box. Just what email kind of outlook, or do you use something else? Outlook, 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 and Gmail. Outlook. We use outlook. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Gmail. Outlook. Web app. Outlook. Google Apps. And Groupwise. There's mm -hmm. a new one. Mm -hmm. So it seems like a lot of products um, tend to look at other providers and, and come up with some of the same features. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Does anybody else have any questions that they want to type into the questions box? All right. Well, seeing none at the moment. Let's switch the presenter back to me, and hopefully this time you guys can see my screen. Not quite sure what happened on that one. Sorry about that. Yay! All right, I just wanted to show the opening screen again so you guys could get the spelling of Nancy and Felicity's names. Well, thank you, ladies, for a very interesting presentation. And thank you to all of our attendees for sticking with us through the, the introduction that wasn't. I apologize <laughs> about that. <laughs> we hope you found today's session useful. Soon you'll receive a short online evaluation form. 
please take a few minutes to respond to the questions and return the form to us. Your comments are very valuable and help the ELEC-CE committee plan new continuing education offerings. Information about all ELEC's continuing education opportunities can be found on the ELEC's homepage at the URL which you can see on your screen. Upcoming webinars include Part 6 of the Working with Continuing Resources series and sessions on providing perpetual access to electronic serials, a session in Spanish on promoting institutional repositories, and using LibGuides and technical services. Suggestions for webinars and other continuing education opportunities are welcome at any time. Please feel free to submit a proposal for a webinar using the form at the URL listed on your screen. We're always looking for good ideas. I would like to thank Kat Bailick for providing technical support for today's webinar. The support she and her colleagues on the Technical Support Committee provide make it possible for us to present these webinars smoothly. Although today wasn't that smoothly, but that was mostly my fault. I apologize. <laughs> I would also like to recognize Heather Staines, representing CRS's Education, Research, and Publications Coordinating Committee, which helped organize this series by helping to select topics and finding presenters for it. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope you'll participate oh, in other Alex Continuing Education offerings again in the future. We have another question, ladies. A couple questions here. How do you put due dates on the emails? Are they all just as soon as possible or are assumed for each issue? That's where, this is Felicity, that's where I'm thinking to use the flags. Mm -hmm. So okay. the flags, um, they have today, I think the, the latest one is, the longest one is a week. But right. that would be a way mm -hmm. to put some sort of deadline on it. Mm -hmm. I think you could also uh, notate the subject line um, so that you could, uh, for example, if you wanted to put a rush in, um, sometimes those do come up when things are already in process, you could just annotate the subject line. And our rushes, we, we just have a general policy that those are in and out of our department within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that looks like that really is the last question. So thank you again for joining us today, and everyone have a great day.